Right. Shalom, uh, I'm Dr. Yasapa from Zion Law School. Um, I want to share with everybody some news about what's happening uh, with the U.S. election, the presidential election. And if you look at my screen, um, this is an executive order. Uh, the title of it is Executive Order on Imposing Certain Sanctions in the Event of Foreign Interference in a United States Election. This executive order was issued on September 12, 2018. And give me one moment, I'm gonna read this to you. Uh, this is something, um, it's a very, very interesting development. And I'm curious why nobody is talking about this. Uh, this will supersede any type of action uh, that a state, uh, Secretary of State uh, uh, might do relative to uh, Credentialing, credentialing the uh, the uh, the uh, the winner of the election. So let's go into this. I'm going to read it, <clears throat> uh, and you can see from what I read what is actually happening right now. This is going to explain to you what's going on with the election right now. Executive order on imposing certain sanctions in the event of foreign interference in a United States election issued on September 12th, 2018. By the authority vested in me as president by the constitution and the laws of the United States of America, including the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, 50 USC 1701 at Squire, I believe that's Squire, I-E-E-P-A, the National Emergency Act, 50 USC 1601 at Squire, NEA, Section 212F of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952, 8 USC 1182F, and Section 301 of Title III, United States Code. Next paragraph. I, Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, find that the ability of persons located in whole or in substantial part outside of the United States to interfere in or undermine public confidence in United States elections, including through the unauthorized access of election and campaign infrastructure or the covert distribution of propaganda and disinformation constitutes an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. Although there has been no evidence of a foreign power altering the outcome or vote tabulation in any United States election, foreign powers have historically sought to exploit America's free and open political system. Now remember this was uh, issued in 2018 back to the paragraph. In recent years, the proliferation of digital devices and internet-based communications has created significant vulnerabilities and magnified the scope and intensity of the threat of foreign interference as illustrated in the 2017 Intelligence Community Assessment. I hereby declare a national emergency to deal with this threat. So, all of these things are what we see happening today, isn't it? With the censoring on social media and the software uh, from Dominion um, that turns out to be uh, uh, a scam, to, to put it uh, simply. Now let's go back to the paragraph. And all of the other alleged voter fraud. So let's go back here. So we, we see we're dealing with the complex chess game or with theater. You decide. Back to the paragraph. Accordingly, I hereby order section 1A, not later than 45 days after the conclusion of the United States election, the director of national intelligence in consultation with the heads of any other appropriate executive departments and agencies 
shall conduct an assessment of any information indicating that a foreign government or any person acting as an agent of or on behalf of a foreign government has acted with the intent or purpose of interfering in that election. The assessment shall identify to the maximum extent ascertainable the nature of any foreign interference and any method employed to execute it, the persons involved and the foreign government or governments that authorized, directed, sponsored, or supported it. The Director of National Intelligence shall deliver this assessment and appropriate supporting information to the President, the Secretary of the State, the Secretary of the Treasury, the Secretary of Defense, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of Homeland Security. B, within 45 days of receiving the assessment and information described in Section 1A of this order, the Attorney General and the Secretary of Homeland Security, in consultation with the heads of any other appropriate agencies and, as appropriate, state and local officials shall deliver to the president, the secretary of state, the secretary of treasury, and the secretary of defense a report evaluating with respect to the United States election. That is the subject of the assessment described in section 1A. I, paragraph I, to the extent to which any foreign interference that targeted the election infrastructure materially affected the security or integrity of that infrastructure, the tabulation of votes or the timely transmission of election results. So here we see the, uh, the ballots, the uh, software that was used, right? The ballots and the software that was used uh, to tabulate the votes. So all of this is what we're seeing right now. But the very interesting thing is, is that even once the, 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 the votes are certified by the Secretary of State and delivered to Congress, it's still going to have to go through this procedure. Even if it goes to the Supreme Court, it's still gonna have to go through this procedure as, as we just read. <clears throat> so, and the, the curious thing is they probably have not told this to the public because they're letting people know. People knew right now they're exposing themselves because they do not know that this executive order exists. Okay, so now let's look at paragraph II. If any foreign interference involved activities targeting the infrastructure of or pertaining to a political organization, campaign, candidate. So political organization could be Democrat, Republicans, Antifa, Black Lives Matter, whatever. The extent to which such, such activity, activities materially affect the security or integrity of that infrastructure, including by unauthorized access to disclosure or threatened disclosure of or alternation or falsification of information or data. Next paragraph. The report shall identify any material uses of issues of fact with respect to these matters that the Attorney General and the Secretary of Homeland Security are unable to evaluate or reach agreement on at the time the report is submitted. The report shall also include updates and recommendations when appropriate regarding remedial actions, that means remedy, remedial actions to be taken by the United States government other than the sanctions described in section two and three of this order. So the US government can do a whole lot more. That's what it's saying. Whatever it finds the appropriate remedy might be. Okay, paragraph C. Heads of all relevant agencies shall transmit to the director of national intelligence any information relevant to the execution of the director's duties pursuant to this order as appropriate and consistent with applicable law. If relevant information emerges after the submission of the report mandated by section 1A of this order, the director in consultation with the heads of any other appropriate agencies shall amend the report as appropriate and the attorney general and the secretary of Homeland Security shall amend the report required by section 1B as appropriate, paragraph D. Nothing in this order shall prevent the head of any agency or any other appropriate off official 
from tendering to the president at any time through an appropriate channel, any analysis, information, assessment, or evaluation of foreign interference in a United States election, paragraph E. If information indicating that foreign interference in, in a state, tribal, or local election within the United States has occurred is identified, it may be included as appropriate in the assessment mandated by section 1A of this order or in the report mandated by section 1B of this order or submitted to the president in an independent report, paragraph F. Not later than 30 days following the date of this order, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Treasury, the Attorney General, the Secretary of Homeland Security, and the Director of National Intelligence shall develop a framework for, process, for the process that will be used to carry out their respective responsibilities pursuant to this order. The framework, which may be classified in whole or in part, shall focus on ensuring that the agencies fulfill their responsibilities pursuant to this order in a manner that maintains methodological consistency, protects law enforcement or other sensitive information and intelligence sources and methods, maintains an appropriate separation between intelligence functions and policy and legal judgments, ensures that efforts to protect electoral processes and institutions are in, uh, insulated from political bias and respects the principles of free speech and open debate. Section 2A, I'm sorry, section two, paragraph A. All property and interest, now notice this, notice this. All property and interest and property that are in the United States that hereafter come within the United States or that are hereafter come within the possession or control of any United States person of the following persons are blocked and may not be transferred paid, exported, withdrawn, or otherwise dealt in. Any foreign person determined by the state, by the Secretary of Treasury in consultation with the Secretary of State, the Attorney General, and the Secretary of Homeland Security, paragraph uh, bullet, bullet I, to have directly or indirectly engaged in sponsored concealed or otherwise been complicit in foreign interference in a United States election. So this would be all of the tech companies like Google, like Facebook. This would be the big media channels like CNN, uh, MSNBC, Fox News. So this is a very, very wide net of organization. Now, now remember, it's not just companies, it's also people, right? So all of these companies who, who have been censoring people uh, and censoring information about the election, all of these people are now uh, potentially, or at least the, 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 the executive order is in place to seize all of these proper, people's property and have them arrested. Bullet point two, to have materially assisted, sponsored or provided financial material or technological support for or goods or services to in order to support of any activity described in section eight I of this section or any person whose property and interest in property are blocked pursuant to this order. So this is saying that anybody who made donations uh, uh, to any organizations that were involved in any of this activity uh, can be hit by this executive order. They can be taken down by this executive order. Okay, bullet point three, to be owned or controlled by or to have acted or purported to act for or on behalf of directly or indirectly any person whose property or interest in property are blocked pursuant to this order. Okay, so this would also include those organizations like Black Lives Matter, et cetera. B, Executive Order 13694 of April 1st, 2015, as amended by Executive Order 13757 of December 28, 2016, remains in effect. This order is not intended to and does not serve to limit the Secretary of Treasury's discretion to exercise the authorities provided in Executive Order 13694, where appropriate, the Secretary of the Treasury, in consultation with the Attorney General, 
and the Secretary of State may exercise the authorities described in, ex in Executive Order 13694 or authorities or other authorities in conjunction with the Secretary of the Treasury's exercise of authorities provided in this order. C, paragraph C, the prohibitions in subsection A of this section apply except to the extent provided by statutes or in regulations, orders, directives, or licenses that may be issued pursuant to this order. And notwithstanding any contract entered into or any license or permit granted prior to the date of this order. Section three, following the transmission of the assessment of man, let me read that again, section three, following the transmission of the assessment mandated by section 1A and the report mandated by section 1B, paragraph A, the secretary of the treasury shall review assessment mandated by section 1A and the report mandated by Section 1B and in consultation with the Secretary of State, the Attorney General and the Secretary of Homeland Security impose all appropriate sanctions pursuant to Section 2 of this order and Section 2B of this order and 